I kind of remember that Carlton side pretty well in around that 2011 to 13 range because that was when the Eagles sort of came up and made their resurgence from being a wooden spooner in 2010. In 2011, we shocked the world by uh, making the top four. And then, of course, we had that classic semi-final in Perth where we beat you guys by three points. That remains for me like one of the best finals I've actually seen. Um, I have to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have Gibbs or Cruiser that game. What is your recollection of that night? Like, did you think you got away with it? Did you think, we were, you know, do you remember that? Yeah, you're kind of testing my memory here because it was a while ago. However, um, I remember being very confident because, like, throughout that season, you were pegged as, like, a real top four contender, um, at least in sort of the media, whereas the Eagles were pretty much sort of, it was more like, as they kept winning, people were like, oh, are they actually are they actually that good? Oh, they've just beaten a team. So we, we beat you guys really uh, convincingly in Melbourne, and that was when I was, like, super confident. So... So going into the final, I was even more confident. I was like, we're in Perth. There's no chance we're going to lose this. My recollection of the game is that we where we were battling. Like It was one of those games where like, if we win this, it's going to be very, very lucky. So I couldn't tell you whether we stole one, but I do remember a massive sense of relief. I was absolutely overjoyed because we'd won the spoon the year before. Um, but I don't necessarily think... I thought, yeah, we played better that game. But what about you? Were you felt like it was a real robbery? Man, you know, Cruiser has just, and I'm sure you'd be aware, he's just had this career that started so well, littered with injuries ever since he did his first knee. And I remember that week we played the smashed them. Um, Juddy didn't even have his best game. It was all like the rest of the team. Gibbs hurt his shoulder at the end of that Essendon game. He didn't play against the Eagles that week. Um, Cruiser didn't play as well. And Cruiser's just been that guy that when he's in, we're better because he allows the other midfielders to have a little bit more space to, you know, do their thing. And uh, I remember there was a free kick that could have been awarded to Andrew Walker at the end that wasn't as well. And, um, oh, man, a devastating loss. I really, really believe that we should have won that game. But history books will say that you guys were the better side and you were. Um, and, and in retrospect, that is as good as we've ever been since I've been alive, 95 and 99 we're standing. Um, but that was really the year that got away because 2012, you know, goes on to show that, you know, we had the injuries and whatever else. So I'm, I've been watching 2011 back again and just sort of realizing, oh my God, we had it. We had it. That was the year, but it wasn't to be. Yeah. I mean, we got, we got paid out the next week. We got absolutely slaughtered by Geelong, who ended up winning the grand final by about six goals anyway. So um, I don't know how much you really missed out there. Maybe I think, Carlton, you did have a knack of beating Geelong back then, so maybe you would have had a good chance. But, um, yeah. Um, I want to also ask you, and this is kind of segues into the Judd conversation, because being an Eagles and Carlton fan, uh, fans, rather, um, that's a good topic. But how do you reflect on that period generally in terms of specifically 2011 to 2013? Do you feel like it was an underachievement or like how do you or do you feel like it was bad luck through like those injuries you mentioned? How do you reflect on that? So I mean, you know, there's the there's the the practical school of thought. Did you win a flag with Judd or did you not? And is that a success or failure? So obviously we didn't win a flag with him. You can call it a failure if you want. But um, for those who are non Carlton supporters, you've got to remember what we had come back from, the salary cap infringements. That we still feel that today. Like and so Sorry. in twenty in two thousand and five six seven we get uh, Murphy Gibbs Cruiser, twenty eleven Murphy becomes one of the best five or six midfielders in the league. He wins the MVP award, wins the Coaches Association award. We get so when Judd came, it was like we needed we needed something like that to just project us up because we've always had the the beauty of having the fan base and you know the emotional support from the people and the energy and the electricity. So. Um, if you want to talk about flags, yes, West Coast win because Josh Kennedy, you know, you want to flag with him, totally get it. But um, you need to understand also what it meant for the club who was coming back from where we were coming back from. We were stripped of the draft picks for two years and um, Judd brought the professionalism, which allowed Murphy to grow, which allowed Gibbs to eventually grow, um, which allowed guys like, you know, Dennis Armfield to play a role and Mitch Robinson to, to play a role and, 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 you know, these kind of guys. And so... Um, and man, oh, if I had a camera around me, like day to day, when Juddy was, was an, announced as as a Carlton player onwards, it was it was crazy. Like I remember going to school every morning at eight o'clock. So I was in year twelve 
in 2008. So that was the first season he played with us. I remember going to school at 8 a.m. because mum had to go to work early. So I used to go to the library. I used to get the newspaper every day from the library, cut out any photo of Chris Judd that was in the paper, which, as you can imagine, would have been most days. And I used to stick it on my locker. And I'm not kidding you when I say there's like 175 different cutouts of Judd in my locker. Like what he brought for the fan like me, the young fan, the the 16-year-old fan, and he allowed more fans of the club to develop, which allowed us to then follow that on with with Crips and, and whatnot. So, yeah, look, it, it was a loss practically because we didn't win a flag, but it was such a win for us off field. And, and, you know, he could have gone to Melbourne and had that same impact. He could have gone to Collingwood and had a bigger impact. Um, Hawthorne, I think there was a, a possibility of that as well. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't take it back at all. It was a huge tick for us. Yeah, cool. I tend to agree with that. As an Eagles fan, I wasn't trying to sort of like poke the bear in terms of, oh, the Eagles won the trade. That wasn't so much where I was going. I do agree with you. I think it's probably, uh, for such a landmark case, it was like probably the most mutually beneficial trade I've seen in some time. So obviously the Eagles were vindicated. Yeah, the Eagles were sort of rewarded for, um, obviously we got two premiership players out of it. From a Carlton perspective, um, Losing Josh Kennedy must have been a bummer because you guys struggled for a key fo- without a cre- uh, key forward. For- at least that's my recollection in that 2011, 12, 13 era. I think from memory that was kind of your missing piece. But I do agree with overall the the value that he brought. I kind of thought maybe for Carlton uh, and you, you know, there's nothing you can do about this, but it almost came like a year or two early in terms of I felt like he kind of lifted the club up out of its rebuild uh, almost artificially. I don't know if you agree with that, but it was more like, oh, we've got Judd now, so we've pri- it's time to, to lift our game. But although I would say I'm almost more critical of the way things fell out at Carlton as an outsider post-Judd. And what what's your recollection of that? Because obviously Ratton got sacked after one bad year, as far as I can remember. I think they finished 10th. And they said, no, thanks. We're going to replace you with Malthouse. Some of the list management around that, like drafting Bl- Bl- Blaine Bokehurst at pick 19, um, that's that's a real head scratcher. So like, how, how do you view the fallout from that sort of post-Judd era? Well, I'll go from when he first came here. So we didn't really feel the effect of Kennedy leaving because Favola was the best, one of the best True. forwards in the game, right? So I don't even remember watching Josh Kennedy play, if I'm honest. I don't remember saying to myself, hey, we've got this young up-and-coming forward named Josh Kennedy. So it was okay. And we had Fev, and, you know, this was before Fev fell out with the club and had we, we sacked him. So we didn't, you know, we had the, we had the forward. We had him. And then end of, uh, we make finals in 09. We lose to Brisbane. He leaves, I think, end of 09. I think that's what it was. Um, and then we play finals in, in 10. We play, we lose to Sydney. And then obviously 11 happens. And yeah, we we felt the loss of him in in eleven. I was I was talking about this with someone last night. Like, had Favola still been there, and he would have been at his peak because he had just come off ninety nine goals in oh nine. I think it was. Oh wait, sorry. Um, yeah. You know, he would have seen, still been able to be a sixty five to seventy five a year goal kicker. It would have been a, a huge tick for us with Judd, and so we were hurt by that for sure. Um, massively hurt by that, and then. You know, with Rats and Malthouse, it was, um, you know, looking back, it's easy to say it was a poor decision. But I still remember at the time, 2012 happened, and it was stiff because we had, we've always been a club that you hurt our top end players, you hurt the whole club. You know, Murphy was like the best player in the team, one of the best players in the team. Carazzo was a very underrated player in the team. He was a, a tagger as well and, and, and took the best midfielder each week. So they missed a chunk of that season. Um, Rats was sacked because, you know, Collingwood had just come off this they had like a dynasty team waiting to happen. They fell out with Mick. He left. And so the criticism of Ratton at the time from all Carlton fans, whether they want to admit it or not, is he doesn't have a plan B. He can't, he he gets outcoached every single week. And, you know, Malthouse is proven. He he is what's going to take us to the next step because we've just played finals in 11, et cetera, et cetera. It obviously history will show that it was the wrong decision. And then we had terrible draft picks. I think our 20, 14 draft crop is just littered yeah. with with just rubbish, you know, like just... I think, I think they, they were delisted after, after like, like a couple of years, years, all of them. them. Oh, man. You know, the, the Matty Watsons, the Tom Tamays, the, the Bootsmas. Um, Viojo Rainbow? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, Dylan Viojo, <laughs> yes. 
And then obviously, you know, we get Mick, that comes in and then that happens. And then, you know, um, history might go on to say that Bolton was the wrong choice. But I think Bolton was the right choice for what we needed for these boys at the time because we needed, as a club, in my opinion, we needed a – we were – Carlton, and I, I'd be interested to know if, what the perception is over there as well. We're an arrogant club. You know, we are Carlton. We'll do whatever – you know, it's always been we'll just pay our way through. We'll go get the best player. We'll get the best coach. This is the Carlton way. And so – Bolton was the the changing of the guard and bringing Sauce back as a list manager and saying, right, we're not going to recruit players over the age of X anymore. We're going to go to the draft. And we had never done that as a club. And I'm glad we did because I remember 2013 and 14 and 15 looking at the list and saying, where the fuck is the future? Like Christian Jacks is not going to be the future, you know? Um, so in that sense, it's we've I feel like we're finally out of that cycle. But yeah, look, it was it was um, you know, when you when you're trying to rebuild a club that's come from where we came from and you make more wrong decisions, it hurts. So, yeah, that that's sort of my take on it. I, a lot of people will say Rats shouldn't have got sacked and maybe he shouldn't have, but a lot of the same people were criticizing him for not being able to have a plan B. Yeah, fair enough. That's that's a really good insight. So, I guess fast forward to that Bolton era as well. Um, you said you you're a Bolton man would you go as far as to say as well that you thought he shouldn't be sacked or were you a bit aggrieved by that? And and also, how would you explain why Teague came in and started winning games straight away? Because my personal belief is that it can't be that much of a gap between Teague and Bolton that there's, you know, an immediate effect. There's, there's something under the surface there, maybe. But what was your sort of perception of all that? 